So what you got here today, Wayne? Well, what we have here is the seat off of my 72 Honda CB350 4. And it's in tough shape. Is that 3550cc four cylinder? Yep. Oh, but that sounds cool. <laughs> it's a high rev, 10,000 RPM red line. Got a little problem right there, though. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess we can probably just take the. Good thing about this video is I don't have to work. Cause you're gonna do everything. Oh, that's got a, it's got a pin on it. Or if anything, I guess um, I've got vinyl, chrome vinyl. We can try to wrap it with and see how that works. Nah, I don't know. We'll figure it out once we get to that point. Got a key. It's in a bad spot to you. Rotate it. I should have said, I think you can rotate it. Rotate it! <laughs> rotate it! <laughs> I will do it, I'll do it. Yeah, interesting. You really do not want those coming out. No. You lose your strap, man. You lose your strap. So that buckle, do they have? It's chrome. I you know. I think we might be able to nickel plate that. I think so. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Looking at that, you can either we might be able to get away with that down easily. That steel wool and polish that. One. That might be the only issue. We could probably run it across the buffer and clean it up. See what it looks like. And then just. Keep putting WD or oil on it every once in a while so it doesn't rust again. Yeah, we'll see. A few more pieces. I'm gonna get. So it looks like these guys are a little clamped on. Yeah. It's and then it's very similar to these guys got to be pulled back. I bet. Wait, your seat yeah. This is... Bracketry. More bracketry. Yeah. I'm gonna take these brackets off. You do nothing by hand, she's an impact gun. <laughs> Makes good video. I'll be right back. Here, we'll do it like this. Work harder, not smarter. <laughs> Wait, I said, I said that backwards. And it looks like these little spring clippies just kind of pull back with a flat screwdriver, I'm guessing. Okay, and then this part looks like... Stapled? I don't know. It looks kind of like what you had before. Here's... Oh, they just have like a little notched out triangle. Yeah, it was probably was up with a screwdriver. Flat screwdriver. You can do these guys in the little bead blaster pull out. The... I guess they're not really just cleaned up because they're not rusty or anything. Yeah, just throw them in the ultrasonic hater and see how they turn out, I guess. Do they, uh, do I, think I, got, I think I've got new, um... Are those rings? Grom grommets, would that be? Mm -hmm. Do these just pull straight out? Pull hard, see what happens. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like a cone shape on the inside, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once we get the thing off, they probably, probably oh. push, that, push that cone from the, other, the other from the other side and they'll come through. Yeah. All right, wait. I wait until I get them out. Oh, oh that worked. Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Are they glued into or is that just foam on That's there? just foam on there. Okay. Probably from the glue, though. Yeah, I would guess you can just take a flat and start here and just slowly pry that back. I'm assuming. Are they springy or are they malle kind of malleable? They feel pretty malleable, though. Yeah, I just put a little bit. Like that's probably far enough. I think so. Yeah, that's off far enough. There you go. Cooking the fire now. Yeah, we'll move fast. That should all be far enough away. Yeah, I think we can just peel that thingy back over the there. Just like, just like now. Just like now. It's kind of good. There we go. Can you hold it for you? There you got it. Lovely. 
this was. I think this was just what they said. You know, it's a just a car door protector. Or at least that's what everyone. I think I've got. Recommends that's what you use. Mm -hmm. You got that done yet? <laughs> no. Stay done. Yeah, I'll have to. Now these, I'll just take a flat screw on the Prezel triangles back, I guess. Yep, just like, just like me. Yeah. It'd be cool to get that tool, that die, and make, and that could punch those triangles out. And yeah, that would be cool. Ah, the carpet strips work so nice. You can like micro fine tune. Really? I mean, since there's eight billion little spikies. Oh in yeah, there. you have so much more. Yeah. There we go. That thing's a unit. So how, what, how's the, the rest, rest of the bike in pretty good shape? You have to send me some pictures for the video. Yeah, we'll send you some. We'll, you guys can take a look yourself. Yeah. It hasn't been run in 34 years. Or, I mean, we could, I was thinking we could take, we could put that carpet strip. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is modifying it. We could use that carpet strip in here and actually fold the, fold the vinyl over and put it down on those carpet strips. Mm -hmm. And then you could just get that C-channel, there's a chrome, mm -hmm. like a C-channel um, door, door ding trim at O'Reilly to go around, it'd look close. So I, what Depends I saw, on how original you want to be. So what I saw online that a couple people did, just basically exactly what you said, only they didn't put any carpet thing down, they just, they did that C-channel, put the vinyl in there, C-channeled mm -hmm. it, pulled these across and held it down. Mm -hmm. I think we should try that first. Here. Cool. So this part though, you said this piece typically come off, huh? Because it kind of might be glued on. We might not need to take it off, depends on. Yeah, I'd probably leave it alone rather than try to. We can just use the spot sandblaster outside to, to do the, un the underside. And I mean, there's plenty of metal here. I don't think you'll ever have to worry about that no. rusting through. No, it'd just be nice to. Yeah, we'll get the spot sandblaster and check the outside. This off? Or will that stay on? That probably, the sandblaster probably won't hurt that. I, I think we just mask around that with some tape. This is the central, ma central pneumatic. This is the good stuff. Yeah, I guess by the time we um, we'll have to sandblast and paint this, it'll take a while for that to all set up. So I guess we can do whatever, whenever. Mm -hmm. Let's sandblast it. Hey cows, go away! I know you want treats. We got nothing for you though. Oh yeah, that's working pretty good. Okay, fine. If you're gonna be that way, just don't tell mom where you got them from, okay? Hey, buddy. Yeah. No, got everything off, and we can hand sand and scotch bright the rest of it. Yeah. 320 should work. Do you have, uh, do you have some scotch bright sitting over here, too? Yeah, some more. Yeah, I think for any degreasing, probably just heck, let's rub it, let's rub it with whack in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd say take the hand sander and... I'll hit the, I'll hit it here in a second so it gets this big it's mud off. goo off there. Yeah, we could pressure wash it, but then the foam's gonna get all wet and moldy and crappy. Oh no, I think this is gonna work out just fine. Yeah. It's the bottom of a seat cover, it's fine. Yeah. Hey, that sandblaster did a pretty darn good job. Yeah, it did. Well, I'll be darned. It cleaned it right off. Yeah. Yeah, we'll use this instead of lacquer thinner, a little less aggressive. I should have brought some. I have just a. There was one day when uh, at Walmart they had a, the 
the wax and grease remover. You just give her a good scrubbing with that, and as long as everything is etched up with the Scotch Brite and the sander. Yep, I think it is. I mean, unless you want to feather this with sand, with the regular sander a little bit, because you're going you're gonna to see that edge. But like I said, it's not. I, I think we're, I think we're pretty okay. good looking. Yeah, I am at least. <laughs> really good looking. Damn pretty. What do we got here? Low gloss black, that's the stuff right there. Yeah, I like that Rust-Oleum low gloss. It's very, very factory looking color and sheen. It's got a good sheen, huh? Just like Charlie. Charlie sheen. Just like Charlie. Ooh, baby. That dust, it's like it's like all my paper. Well, there's dust in it in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have it. It's like in the driveway. <laughs> One bad thing about Rust Oleum is it takes a long time to dry. But it's very good stuff though when it's finally set up. That's that one? That's too big. Yeah, dig around there. That should be something. Are hey, you 16? Quite close enough. Probably would work. 5 16 should work. There you go. What is this? 7 millimeter? That's good to go. That one's gonna work. We were gonna have to buff it up. I'd like to try to hold it like that. Yeah, I was gonna put some tape on it first. So it doesn't get marred up. So marred it so much. Or even top the cabinet. Get a little bit of grip on it. Well, if even you can spread it out, it might try to go by itself. <laughs> Any luck? Oh, it, well, it moved a little, maybe. There it goes. Now. The rubber. Oh, there's a little melt strip in there. Isn't yeah, there? that's what I. I didn't want to cut that. Okay, I see what you're, I see what you're talking about. So now, can we take a vice grip, like fold this, yeah, up, and squeeze that with a vice grip, or even in your vice over there? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's working. You said penetrating oil doesn't work. This is actually taking longer than... <laughs> there! <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, one done. Let me take a look at that little metal strap in there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Try not to... Yeah, we'll de-rustify that guy. Good to go. This guy probably could use some nickel plating. I'm just get a new, new washer on this. I think we'll just run across the buffer wheel real quick. Great. Yeah. All right, we'll try both methods here. We'll use steel wool on one and the polishing wheel on the other one. It is kind of funny though. You can take the nastiest looking chrome and as long as it's not rusty or pitted, just a little steel wool and it looks brand new again. Then keep it nice and new. Just um, either wax it or use that Gibbs penetrating oil or a WD-40 or something on it. Keep it oiled up. Should stay pretty rust free. If you keep after it, eh, this isn't too bad. Let's take a look. A little pitting here and there, but we're driving down the road at 40 mile an hour. It's gonna look beautiful.
highly acceptable. Hold the polish up to it when it's going a little bit. Yep. There you go, perfect. It's very light, don't give it a lot of pressure. You couldn't really rub all the plating off of it. Where'd it go? <laughs> That's funny. That's really good. <laughs> do, it, do it again. <laughs> Getting there? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any plating left on that one. I think we might have to nickel plate this one. It looks pretty thin. Well, we're going to make a nickel plating video yeah. on one for one bolt. <laughs> we might, be, might need to do this one too. This is the one you were kind of concerned about. Yeah, give it a give it a little bit of a buff here. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, this one's lovely. Yeah, that one's great. This one's kind of going to need a little more tension, I think. But I think it's going to come get It'll there. Look good. It'll get there. Yeah, that one's good. There's that one little nick there, but I think, like I said, it's pointing down the seat. I think we'll just take a little bit of silver spray paint on a brush and fill that in so it doesn't rust. Yeah. I can see a lot of sand. trick with polishing is we got to get this as smooth as we can get it. So I'm just going to sand it first and then we'll put it over on the polishing wheel and get it buffed to a mirror shine. Getting there. I think we should get the wonder winder in the, in the video. Yeah, man. Yeah, start on the right side there with the black stick and give it a lot of pressure. And we, what we're looking for is a mirror finish because the bare steel has to be as shiny as you want it to be. So make sure you like drag it on it and launch it across the floor and lose it. You use quite a bit of pressure. It's probably going to get to the point where it's going to get hot. A little warm? <laughs> you can take a break if you need. You want the threads done too? No. Just the head. Just the head. Get in there though. Okay. Let it cool down. And you can try that brown compound now. If, if No, the, on, on this wheel. Oh, there you go. Yep. Brown. See the brown streaks? Yeah. That's then you know it's working. Yeah, that's great. That should make her a little shinier. Oh, yeah. Look at wax on it and stuff, but she's a little hot, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. Did you say more on the edges, or no, you can do the whole thing until it's mirror mirror shine? All right, a little more brown. I gotta have a brown streak, because I'm not happy. That's what Mama always says. You tell these are your underwear. Take her over to this guy with the white polish and... Yeah. Oh yeah. Really no more. That's gonna look pretty pretty. It's gonna look perfect. This will really shine it up. For that though, you have to throw in the Ultra Sonicator 5000 there. You ready to put it in? Yeah. It's cold, but it should be fine. <laughs> Set it to oh. master. All right. Give it the screws. Oh, this is hilarious how this thing sounds on camera. Yeah. Here. <laughs> he has to come on. <laughs> Ow. Alright, I'll take a pretty shiny bolt out of the sanicator. Let's just rinse it off in some distilled water. Get the residue off that guy. Should be pretty clean. Wrap this around here and hopefully it'll stay on. Maybe. Perfect. Oh, I think we're 
my business. Yeah, so now we'll get the uh, power supply out of here and get the flies off the nickel bin. It's, act it's the ecto cooler. <laughs> and we'll make some nickel. Let's put, this, let's put this someplace where we can get it really dirty before we ready to go. Just you put it in your mouth. Okay. <laughs> ah, nickel. Nickel. guys and more nickel so now I need another piece of welding wire and I'll hang this guy off the positive and our bolt off the negative and the switch on we should make bubbles so actually I'll plug in here and <laughs> the camera jumps too you know, by the way <laughs> <laughs> got me I should actually put a fuse on this positive lead because the stuff just sitting there all day, somebody comes over and bumps it and arcs, arcs it out. I'm sure this Amazon special uh, power supplies all the safety features. <laughs> oh, this must, have been the, this must have been the anode last time. Wait, anode's the... Cathode. No, Cat anode. Anode's the negative side, right? Mm-hmm. You always remember Damn. if I... Cat I will take this and dip it in the goo. About right there. Yeah, one day I think I'll have to make a nickel plating video. It's kind of simple. Building the rig. There. Kind of like that. And we'll put the negative on that side and the positive on the nickel rod. Hit the button, give it about oh, four or five volts. I need, I need to get a bubbler in here too because um, if air bubbles culminate, congregate <laughs> on a part of the bolt, mm. you'll have like a dark burn spot or something won't get played. So you have to kind of sit here for like a half hour and, and vibrate and, it and shake it. Vibrate the bubbles off. So I need to either make some kind of rig that will do this constantly, or I don't know if like an aquarium bubbler blow it would help. Hmm. So let's turn it on. Oh, just about right. A little bit hot. We'll give her about five volts. And I found in doing this, sometimes the temp comes out a little dull, but if you let it run for about a half hour, 45 minutes to get enough nickel on it, and just take it very, very, very lightly on the polishing wheel with that white compound, it turns out quite nice. But yeah. So let's just sit back here too for 45 minutes and watch me do this. Oh man, I'll put that way. Put the light in there if you can see that bubbling, bubbling away in there. Oh yeah. That's why you gotta shake it. You have to get those air bubbles off there or else it won't plate. If one sticks too long. Yeah, she's rocking and rolling. Let's do this on every bolt on the bike, just one at a time. <laughs> oh, okay. You have to drink a lot of beer to get through that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, compared to anything else that you can do at home, like spray paint, any kind of Buffing. gimmick um, to, to do to do something chrome you can't do it. it it looks like even like chrome powder coating we tried that experiment that was hor horrifying that's right and um but if you don't if i think most people if they're walking by they're not going to notice the, the, the difference between chrome that, that that little bit of yellow that you see on the nickel but looking good yeah let's take her out in the sun here and take a look so this one here is the original chrome, and this is the nickel one we displayed it. Let's see if we can get in the sun. The nickel is a little more yellow, but gosh, being able to do this at home, just fantastic if you have a little small trim piece on a bike that you need to fix up yourself. I think it's the way to go, man. If you don't mind a little bit of yellow on the nickel, and it's gonna be sitting inside and sitting inside all the time and waxed and taken care of. I think nickel's plenty, plenty good. What do you think? Lovely. So that's kind of cool that they switched cheese that from the factory. I think we take the bread knife and we cut the thickness of this camping mat off straight across. And then we can use 
any good material here to fill in the hole. But I think we'll take, chop this off and we'll take any good foam and we'll glue it down in here and trim off with the bread knife just a touch so it's nice, uh, some nice new foam, not this chalky crap. And then we'll glue down a couple layers of the camping mat and then we'll use the sander to get the, get the right shape here. Yeah. And the good thing about this uh, closed cell foam, you just take the DA sander and just, <laughs> we, it, we, 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 nice. we, it sands really nice. Only problem is it's a little stiff, but for how cheap it is. What's that, like $10 for that mat? Right there, yeah. <laughs> At least $11, I don't mm -hmm. like it. All right, so, <laughs> cut that bread. All right, man. You know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be too scared about doing this, dude. Cause it's already screwed. Yeah, it's pretty bad shape, right? <laughs> can't, can't, can't break broken. Can't break broken. Yeah. Or if we're smart, we could actually just measure how tall we need to be. But that requires walking over and grabbing a measuring tape. No. See, we'll eventually need to cut this off, but I was just kind of thinking we can use that as a reference. Yeah, I think we'll leave it like that. Just, just a little tiny bit of it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do, would you normally like start here or start there? No. It's plugged in. Now. You're talking to me like I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You've done it before. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Okay, so now what I think we'll do is we'll cut some pieces to cut some there. of that crap out of there and we'll put some of the original foam in that spot and then the rest of this usable original foam Let's try to build we'll that up. put that up there and then at that point probably like two layers of the blue Blue. Camp, or maybe like one layer of the blue camp foam, Swiss cheese like this, and then, one. and then one layer solid, and then that solid one we can sand to the shape. And shape it. Wow. So yeah, I think this little region right here will pop in there. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go have a beer. Yep, it's done. <laughs> thoughts were I'll take and chop off another layer of this good stuff here and put that right there on there so you, so you have a majority of your original foam in that it might just kind of feel a little bit harder to the touch when you touch the vinyl mm -hmm. but I think it's still gonna be plenty of give oh yeah so let's blow this thing off and clean it up and put some get, go get some glue so what you want to do first is undo everything you're doing here because <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to spray glue down first <laughs> Everything you're doing is bad. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. All right, so what we're going to be using is the High Strength 90. So we want to take some of that and spray that kind of like in that whole region. A little more. A little more. Make sure it's on the side foam and on the metal really good. Yeah, that looks good there, but that much glue on the foam itself and we'll let it set up for about oh, two or three minutes and we should be able to go in there and move on to the next layer. Yeah, yeah. Works per it. yeah we'll just cut off the old crusties and we'll glue that down and we should have a fairly even, even thing and then we'll just layer the blue foam nah, 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 until the right height and at that point, we'll 
is the this thing's tight. General so, electric. I mean, the colors, it's, it's got to be from the 50s, right? Oh, yeah. 60s. Yeah. Hopefully, there's enough foam here to do some good, some good stuff with. You kind of tacky. feel where, where, where the glue stays on the piece. You, right there, it's starting to get set up right. But sometimes it, this is still coming off of my finger. But if it, right there, that's ready to rock and roll. Nice. Where it doesn't stick to your finger, but it sticks, stays on the foam. So he's ready. I don't know exactly how we had this, but I really don't think it matters. No. Perfect. I think we're good, dude. So I think now we'll glue. put a layer of glue there. We'll put this piece on it. Let's do it. Here comes the glue. Yeah, I know 3M makes a, a foam specific glue, but everything I built using this high strength 90, this stuff, like that is probably about 10 layers of, not 10 layers of a gym mat. Make sure that surface is touching that surface. Did you see this edge? Are you happy with that edge? I'm not at all, thank you. Ooh, <laughs> she's sticking. Let's try, let's, let's try to be better this time. There you go. All right, and then after that, you just take, you just squish that cat, you squish it. There, <laughs> I really squish that cat. That yeah, squish so that we'll cat. Just leave that uh, sit for a bit. And... That's funny. The table took it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's set up. I think we'll take. Where's your map? My map. It's time to unwrap the map. The unboxing. So what's this? This is the uh, like ten dollar Walmart camping mat. Doesn't look very comfortable for camping. But it's basically a pool noodle. But look though, your shoes, it's so comfortable your shoes will fly off. <laughs> so what we'll do is probably glue down two layers of this over the top of this guy. And then sand everything to shape. All right, let's grab the glue. Scissors working okay, or is a razor knife a better idea? Yeah, that's Good enough. Bit. Kind of crooked, of course. That's perfect, though. That's what you want. Yeah. Lay that down flat. <clears throat> Give it a little. No, let's let's glue it first. Lay it down over here. And, uh... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Got by gluing. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste the glue. Yeah, we're almost out of glue. <laughs> now let's, let's sit for a few minutes here before we press them on. Let's squish that cat. <laughs> oh, this is gonna. This is. This feels fine. You're not gonna notice the extra stiffness. Oh yeah, I like that actually. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Sandbag off there. Sandbag. Whoa, 70 pounds. Well, let's get the glue on it. Get the glue going. You don't have to go up by my hand. I don't need all this. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's going to feel very, very nice. Yeah, I was a little worried about it. Oh, yeah. Like that. Firmer foam, but I think we got enough factory foam though. This is gonna look really nice, especially for 10 bucks. Oh yeah, feel that burn. Feel that burn. You get that. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're all bonded together here. I kind of wish I would have shaved that off, so I think I'm gonna take the bread knife and kind of this direction along here and make this all nice and smooth. Yeah, just like this. Oh, hit the metal. Oh, 
Yep, that's what I was looking for. But the problem is we probably should have filled that in before, but we can take a little bit of something and glue that in there. Yeah, but I'll take and just bevel off that with the bread knife, and then we'll use the DA sander. But this this uh, pool noodle camping man. See how nice and easily that we'll get, we'll get, we'll get around round everything off nice to the original shape. And should work good. So this is the original seat cover. It's missing a little fabric, mostly around here and here. Yeah, but, you got a problem right here? Yeah, and there's a little bit, it's light it, right through here. It's dark there. Yeah. And so that's kind of the trick that I was using on my other seats, that carpet. I don't know what to put it, what's this called, folks at home? I call it carpet spike strips. It's basically the stuff you can get at the big box stores that they use to stick down your carpet into your doorways and stuff, I think. But it works great to chop it up and, um, Put it along the edge of your seat pan, if it's a stock seat pan or whatever, or a homemade one. Nice thing about it is you can use all these little teeth. You have them all the way around to kind of like fine tune and micro tune exactly where you want your vinyl to go so you can get out any wrinkles and all that jazz. Works great. And the only thing after you cut that you kind of have to go back and cut the flanges off. So you end up this little guy down here and this guy up here. So you just have a flat piece of metal. I'm gonna give that a go. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So then we'll just drill a hole, drill a hole there and drill a hole there and we'll rivet it, rivet it to the um, seat pan. We'll be good to go. Let's do that. I might put a vice grips on here just to hold it and drill from this side, don't you think? There, there should be a needle nose vice grips that right in the middle would probably work pretty good. Right down as far as she can go. Yep, right about there. Yeah. Good. Are you done yet? Yep. Done. Okay. Yep. Already went home, had breakfast. Yeah. Upside down. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nope. Joking. <laughs> there it goes. That looked good. That's lovely. That's Ooh, lovely. that's nice. Yep. Yeah. So now you only have to go this far. <laughs> and over here. Almost done. <laughs> Down here. All right, I'll be back later. What are you guys doing outside? It's cold. Thought you guys would have flown south for the winter already, huh? Want some treats? You guys want some treats? Huh? Want some treats? Want some treats? You like that? You want that? You want that? Here you go, Mom. Yeah. You finished yet? I'm done. <laughs> Where have you been? Hello, YouTubers. Nice. Are you done yet? No. Not yet. Holy cow, you made progress though. Look at that. Looking Look at all those dangerous. spiky spikies. I kind of like just holding the camera like this. I can be like Derek with Vice Grip Garage and do th things like this. And Love that guy. I wonder if it's easier just, just to cut this. I wonder what Billy Ocean's up to nowadays. <laughs> 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 so what you doing? I am putting some Gorilla Tape on this edge. To protect it. I didn't know they made Gorilla Tape in that, in that size. Okay, so we're putting the, putting the Gorilla Tape around the metal lip here so when we pull the vinyl across it, it gives it a little bit of cushion so over time when you're rubbing back and forth like this, it won't tear the vinyl. Yeah, that's a lovely idea. That's looking good. Let's see if our little chrome trim is going to fit over that. Oh. That's going to be lovely. Oh, it's kind of like we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to 
line there. I'm gonna take that bread knife and I'm going to probably cut down to right about here, angle this off, and then once we have that rough cut, we'll take the DA sander, and this stuff sands really, really nicely, and we'll sand the nice, pretty stock, round shape. That's not a knife. Oh, well, that's a knife. <laughs> Ow! Carpet spikes. <laughs> <laughs> those, those suckers are sharp. Very excited to see how this works. Yeah, it's surprisingly well. It's kind of like doing body work. <laughs> Get a little shot there. Put a little bondo on there, we're good to go. A little bondo. Yeah, we'll get the other side and sand it down and we could test fit the vinyl over it after that and see how see how it fits. Wait. I got that backwards. backwards. Oh. Oh that was right. <laughs> Darn tight. It is tight. It's tight. Seems to be fitting better. Started back there though. Yeah, as long as we have enough extra to uh, latch onto our carpet strips, we'll. Ooh, we will. Excellent. That means we're making it the right shape, I guess. The problem we got here is. <laughs> these little boop, boop, boop. So, looks like I guessed wrong on the shape of it, but we should be able to just take the sander. Cut there, cut there, and we'll just kind of make it make the foam so it follows that line. And things should be a okay. He's great. Kind of like me. So if I keep the sander angled, I should be able to burn that off and I should be in business. stretch here and there. I think we are getting really close. And like I was saying, you can, st you can still kind of see these wrinkles in between the, um, the seams, but that flex foam, that fabric foam, flex foam will um, cover that all up perfectly. You're never going to see those. What do you think? I like it. Okay. Well, let's grab the fabric foam. Yeah, you can definitely see that little ridge there, um, but that'll go away once we get the, get the fabric foam on there. Neato speedo. Very cool. That looks fantastic. I think we'll put the uh, fabric foam on right after the glue on and we'll use the carpet strips to kind of hold it in place where we need to be and we'll trim off the excess. Setting up. <laughs> All right, dang it. Gotta go pretty quick with it. Yeah, just hold straight up in the air and slice right along this on the edge there. The good thing about 
that flex foam, it still has enough give to it. If you have a high spot, we'll just stretch that chunk um, on the carpet strips one way or the other a little bit to, to smooth the high spots out and we'll be a little bit looser on the um, low spots and you're not going to see one wrinkle in this darn thing. And that's the nice thing about having a ta one tiny little spike all the way around. We can put it on and if there's a wrinkle here we can pull it back off really easy and move it one way or the other. And God, that stuff flex is nice. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this this material is really nice. Oh. Oh, baby. And when there's any high bumps, we can take and stretch the vinyl a little bit tighter on the carpet strips, and that will smooth out those high areas. It's not bad, though. Yep, so then we'll take a razor blade and just cut one little slit on the inside so the factory will do hickeys can pop through. Yep, go for it. No, 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 not there. <laughs> Are you done yet? Not yet. Yep. Neato. All right, so now you got about a dozen left? 100 left. All right. We're just about ready to put the chrome trim on the C doing, channel. Doing it wrong. Yeah, it's just kind of a dorting protector thing. We have two sizes, like a, one that's about half this width, but this is the exact size of the stock trim. So we're gonna put the seat channel stuff all the way around. If you bend it back like this, it kind of spreads the bottom piece out. So you roll it back and just kind of roll it on. Yeah, it's not, it's not cooperating, but it's gonna eventually get there. Yeah, I think this is a great job for you, dude. All right. Got that done yet? Yeah, I'm just waiting for you to get the camera so I can just finish her up quick. And the original was rubber too, wasn't it? it or plastic. It, it, was was, plastic. it wasn't like real like stainless or aluminum or something. Cool. No, this yeah, this is this is kind of the real deal then. You know, once we get her all done, we'll clamp those. That's what the original looked like. Oh yeah, same stuff. Cool. You have those stock um, edge trim pieces? Yeah, we should be able to pop those on right there, and that should look like the real freaking deal. Wow, nice. As I put the camera directly into the map gas. <laughs> it's probably hot yeah. enough. It's pretty hot. I'd say just go on the outside and poke. Ready? Seal it up. There you go. Right in. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yep, that should keep that from uh, that should keep that from spreading spreading out again. So what do we got going on here? So I believe this goes like this. And then you... Oh, then you see a hole through there and that bullet goes through? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, just grab the torch again and heat up that little punch and poke a hole through there. Push it through. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna look nice. Whoop, back to this project. Okay, that's where we at. All right, now we got our buckle buckled. It's time to... Well, this has got a cotter key in the back. This bolt does. Oh, we can get a new one of those too. There you go. All the way through. Just chop it right there. Perfect. Holy Moses, dude, you did it. We did it. Oh, I got an idea. We did it. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna love this. What are we talking about? This chrome trim that is the door protector for SUVs from O'Reilly's. Yeah. Oh, it's just, just it's, it's the exact same size as the original, it's the same stuff too. It's just, yeah, the only thing that was different, the factory one had that heat molded line there, which mm -hmm. you're not gonna have, but oh well. But we're gonna get this on here very soon, Mike. Look at that. There's a ghost. Yeah, so I cut out the word Honda on the vinyl cutter. And instead of like making a sticker, we're going to weed out the opposite and make a stencil. First thing I want to do is, let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Doing that with the razor. This is going to be a problem when we go to put it on the seat because this yeah. little sucker won't want to stay there. 
What were we talking about earlier today? Your six year uh, XL six hundred R. What does the R stand for? It stars. I don't. Not sure, but when I drive it, it stands for wreck or so there, dude. Make sure that's all stuck down good. I like it. Yeah. After five minutes here, we'll give it a second dusting. This is going to look so weird on my Yamaha, though. <laughs> Are you recording that? Yeah. Now watch all the freaking overspray. I'm just gonna be oh my gosh. enraged. It's like for the first time you, uh, you, you know, you. Ha! Huh? By the time we get the masking off, I think we should be good to go. Well, that feels nice. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, for sticking around to see the old Honda seat come back to life. Hope you all had a good time and learned some new tricks along the way. And if you feel you gained some value in this video series, please return the favor and click the like button before you take off. It'll really, really help me out. So next week, we're going to get back to the hardcore fabrication and start building another monster Honda three-wheeler conversion bike. This one's going to be a riot. See you next week. I hope you liked this episode of Bigfoot Bikes and Brews. Click on one of the videos here if you want to see some more. And please click on the Bigfoot button to subscribe to the channel and join in on the fun. See you next week.